Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to be hosted by the University of um, Boston and to be invited in a session named after one of my heroes, Walter Rodney. In October 83, I started to study African languages and history at the University of Ghent in Belgium. And one of the first books I read was How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. And reading that book was really a um, life changer. It had an enormous impact on, my, on me and on the way I looked to Africa. And so it's a huge pride to be part of the Walter Rodney Lecture Series. Thank you for that. To start, I want to take you back to a scene uh, more than 20 months ago, 24th of January uh, 2019. A ceremony focused on two men, the smaller one seems to enjoy himself. He is even smiling, something he rarely does in public. He's relaxed and looks like if a burden has been taken away from his shoulder, which is probably the case. Joseph Kabila, because that's his name, is the president of Congo since January 2001, after the assassination of his father, Laurent Désiré Kabila, is about to hand over power to the tall, heavy man Beside him, Felix Tshisekedi. Felix Tshisekedi is visibly very nervous and has difficulties to breathe. Apparently, they have not found the bulletproof vest in his size. When he is about to faint, he, some uh, collaborators keep him from falling and he drinks a bit of water, apologies, apologizes for the moment of weakness and eventually starts to talk to the national and international guests. On the 21st January um, 2019, Felix Antoine Tshisekedi was inaugurated as the fifth president of the Democratic Republic of Congo. For the first time in the country's history, a president left office to be replaced by an elected successor and who was the son of the legendary opposition leader, Etienne Tshisekedi, who stood up against Mobutu since the late 70s and continued the struggle against the Kabila regime. After Etienne's death in February, 2017, Felix Tshisekedi became president of the historical opposition party, U U uh, UDPS, uh, Union pour la démocratie le progrès social. This historical moment is not the result of a transparent democratic process, quite the contrary. Felix Tshisekedi was declared the winner of an unlikely electoral coup based on manipulated results and an unexpected alliance. In reality, he obtained less than a third of the votes of his main competitor, Martin Fayoulou. In addition, suspected electoral fraud at the parliamentary elections have returned parliament and provincial assemblies in which Kabila's FCC, Front Commun pour le Congo, Common Front for Congo, holds majority. So this will allow Kabila to keep Tshisekedi on a leash and leaves the FCC with real power in most domains of public life. I would like to um, go with you into this um, electoral exercise. And let's start with two electoral years without elections. Joseph Kabila had been inaugurated himself as the first president of the Third Republic in the historical election of 2006, almost six years after he succeeded his father, three and a, years, three and a half year uh, after he became the president of the complex transition uh, period. His victory in 2006 was extremely important and was a step towards the restoration of legitimacy in Congo, which disappeared in the first weeks uh, and months after independence after the neutralization first and later the assassination, the physical assassination of the uh, elected prime minister Patrice Lumumba between September 1960 and January 61. In 2011, Kabila was elected for a second and constitutionally last mandate. In the running up to the next elections scheduled for 2016, people started to speculate if really he would invest in a process to hand over power. Several maneuvers and ambiguous signals gave the impression that he was interested to change the constitution in order to create um, an, an environment which allowed him to stand for a third term. 
he tried and he did not, he was not able to do that. Eventually, he deployed a series of strategies to delay the election in an attempt to remain in power. Yeah. Simply by not organizing the elections in, um, to install a successor. Congolese jokingly, well, half jokingly, let's say, called it le glissement, yeah, the, the sliding of time. On the 20th December of 2016, his second mandate expired and Congo entered the phase of two years in a constitutionally very uncertain environment with serious risks and the situation um, in terms of security could totally collapse, not only in the east of the country, but also um, in the major cities. One of the main characteristics of those days was the sudden rise of the street, the feeling that the Congolese population could be an unpredictable, unpredictable actor in, in the process. Early 2015, riots broke out in various cities over proposed changes to the electoral law and demonstrated the important role that disaffected urban populations could play in the upcoming election. Which was, which was rather new, at least that hadn't been the case for many years. So frustrated with precarious socioeconomic living conditions and a regime that is increasingly perceived as unrepresentative and unresponsive to the needs and the aspirations of the people, the population, the population apparently could be mobilized for large scale violence, spontaneous riots, uh, where people came together and not not following the the, um, the the orders given by the opposition of civil society, there was something rather spontaneous in 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 these um, in these riots and the way they came together, where they came together, and what exactly they were they were they were shouting. And this. Um, that made that it was very difficult to predict if, when, and how uh, such, such violence would erupt. And the authorities developed an obsession about it. And the, the obsession that an uncontrollable wave of violence could spread the country, even swipe away the regime, and leave Congo uh, behind in institutional ashes on which it is very hard to rebuild the state. It's very interesting how uh, youth movements uh, have been uh, central in this in this development of the of a spontaneous movement and as well into the obsession by the regime. If we look how our friends of La Lucha, for instance, have been mistreated and arrested for many years, um, it is because people thought that the regime thought that they would could give the initiative to something which could become much, much larger. The regime invested in the professional repression machinery, which was very effective indeed, but only in a few places. It was effective in Kinshasa and Lubumbashi, but could by no means cover the entire country. Secondly, yeah, besides, beside the uh, certain potential of street violence. Uh, secondly, you saw an, an acceleration, let's say, of how local conflicts in some areas were manipulated by people with polit political ambition on the provincial and national level. That's, that's ongoing in Congo for many years, but in the last years of Kabila's reign, um, that all of a sudden touched a much larger scale. Um, huge waves of violence were intensified as has been the case in Beni, yeah? um, violence which is going on until today, or even created as in the Kasai. Yeah? We saw how in a few months, um, unrest over a, mm, appointment of a customary chief in a very local context became something which uh, destabilized four or five uh, provinces. 
important during these years also was that the landscape of African politics around Congo um, quickly changed. Since the M23 crisis in 2012, 2013, African multilateral institutions had successfully claimed ownership of the Congolese conflict as an African, uh, as an African issue. Uh, we want to be involved in the way international community treats uh, with this conflict. Uh, the result was a diplomatic competition in the first place between African and Western instances, and in the second place between African institutions themselves, huh? competition between SADC, ICGRL, ICJLR, East African Community and the African Union, uh, upon the ownership and the control, the right of initiative of, of the um, reaction to the M23 crisis. The result of that was the deployment of an entirely SADC steered new MONESCO peace brigade, peacekeeping brigade, which effectively contributed to the neutralize, neutralization of M23. And that was a decisive uh, turning point in the picking order of the different players in the international Congo debate. Africa had assertively and successfully taken the lead. And that has um, changed a lot of things which, which continue until today. In the last years of Kabila's second term and the two years of Dusimo, it became increasingly clear that the African multilateral organizations considered stability in Congo as one of the, their top priority, aware as they were of the, the devastating impact another implosion of the DRC would have on uh, the entire region, the wider region, and uh, as well as on the individual neighbors. Angola, for instance, since the 90s, a very loyal partner of both Kabila's, father and son, had stopped to see Kabila as the best bet to avoid chaos in Congo, and was very aware of the very destructive impact such chaos would have on the Angolan situation. Kabila lost Angola as an ally. In 2017, he lost two other important allies in Sadek, in November, Emerson uh, Man, uh, Nangangwa and replaced Mugabe in Zimbabwe. And in South Africa, the ANC resisted to uh, Jacob Zuma's attempt to arrange his own succession and was replaced by uh, Ramaphosa. So that means that, and that was an important change, that at the end of 2017, it looked like Joseph Kabila had lost his major allies on the continent, apart from maybe uh, President Nkudonziza in Burundi and uh, Mabufuli of Tanzania. It was clear that the African multilateral institutions would play an important role in accompanying Congo in this political transition. And that's the international environment around Congo. The pressure from below uh, within the Congolese public opinion was coordinated by the National Conference of Catholic Bishops, SENCO. Um, Together with the pressure, pressure from above by the international community with neighboring countries in the leading role, it became clear that Kabila would not succeed to stand for a third term. And instead, instead he, joined, he appointed a candidate within his party to succeed him. Senko's role and the Catholic bishop's role is very important because their credibility man, within the communities uh, helped to um, to diminish the the pressure on the street and to to diminish the potential of of uh, uncontrollable violence. So um, Kabila tried to have another mandate and didn't manage. So in summer. Uh, seen from an European Western perspective in July, August 2018, it became clear that we were going towards elections soon. And in August 2018, 
after an intense struggle among powerful interest groups within the regime, and uh, the people around Matata Ponyo had a very strong lobby to have the former prime minister appointed as Dauphin, as crown prince, successor of Kabila. There was a strong lobby in Katanga. There were some lobbies around Kabila. A bit surprisingly, um, Ramazani Shadari from Maniema province was put forward as the FCC compromise candidate. FCC was the new label of the presidential majority. Um, in November 2018, hardly six weeks before the elections, the main political um, families of the opposition met in Geneva. They united on a single um, platform, which was called La Muka, Lingala for a week, and encouraged by international players, agreed on a single presidential candidate, Martin Fayulo, and a uh, business person, who was supported by people who were much more known than himself. Fayulo was, had no, uh, had no, not a national um, aura, but people as Moise Katumbi, Jean-Pierre uh, Bemba, endorsed his candidacy and supported his campaign because themselves they were um, barred from participating uh, due to um, legal reasons. But 24 hours after Fayulu was, uh, after Fayulu's designation, Chisikedi, Felix Chisikedi and Vital Kamere left uh, the uh, uh, Lamuka um, and uh, broke their promises and set up a new coalition, which was called CASH, CAP pour le changement. So a few weeks later, the electoral campaign was launched with Shadari, Fadil, and Felix Kiskegi as the main candidates. The expectation of many observers, both local and international, was that Kabila, the Kabila camp was going to have Shadara, Shadari uh, elected, uh, at least proclaimed as a winner, independently from the vote of the people. The controversial voting machines, the computers, were feared to be the most important instruments to fabricate fake results, the fake results necessary to do so. The first weeks of the campaign were relatively calm, calmer than I would have expected candidates traveled more or less freely throughout the country and were able to address themselves to their potential voters. That became grimmer with, uh, when on 13 December, a fire broke out uh, in a warehouse of the Electoral Commission and destroyed computers and uh, vehicles. In the same period, in the same days, the campaign rallies became more violent in cities such as Lubumbashi, Kalimi, and Bujimai. And there was an ethnic political clash in Yumbi on the border with Congo Brazzaville. The CINI, the Electoral Commission, postponed the elections in Yumbi, Bini, and Butembo and um, added another week to the glissement. The elections were scheduled for 23rd of, of December. And eventually were held on the 30th, two years after the constitutional end of Kabila's term, so yeah, 30th of December. The Congolese electorate went to the vote, went to vote amidst irregularities, confusion, and intimidation. Already the same evening, thanks to the voting machines, the authorities received the first results and were horrified to see that Chadari's scores were too far behind. Uh, the other two main candidates to proclaim him winner of the election. You can falsify election, uh, but at least you have to do that around the candidate who is the strongest candidate in at least some areas. And Shadai wasn't. He was only the winner of the elections in Manima. It was impossibly, it was impossible to, to, to uh, proclaim him winner. Um, so it was clear that uh, Shadari would not win. It was equally clear that, uh, that he wouldn't win and he would not even have credible figures to proclaim him winner. It was also clear that 
Mahter Fayulu would most probably obtain an absolute majority. So the regime approached already on that day uh, the Chisakedi camp and offered the candidate, uh, their candidate, uh, Chisakedi, the, the, the presidency to avoid that power would fall in the hands of Payuli, Payulu, and most importantly, in those of his powerful backers, uh, Bamba and Katumbi. So this scenario, this improvised scenario, allowed Kabila's electoral platform uh, to remain in control in combination with fake uh, overwhelming victory in the parliamentary and provincial elections, which were held under the same fraudulent condition as the presidential polls. Um, it meant that Kabila would remain in the center of the parallel networks which have governed the country since Mobutu's days. It's um, interesting because there never have been published results of the uh, parliamentary elections or the, or the provincial elections. There has, has only been a list of elected people, yeah? no figures, and even less, of course, figures of the defeated candidates. People were just proclaimed winner. On the 10th of January 2019, Hussaini proclaimed the results. Chisakidi won with 38.6 of the vote, um, less than 700,000 700, votes ahead of Martin Fayulu. Ramazani was third with uh, uh, 23.8 in the official uh, results, but leaked data from the CINI computers, the Electoral Commission's computers, and data collected by the church. The church had deployed uh, 40,000 observers and these, these two sources gave an entirely different picture. Payulu won with uh, about 60% of the votes, with Chisikidi and Shandari each around 19 each. Payulu immediately challenged the results, but the Constitutional Court uh, confirmed them. Likewise, the official results of the parliamentary uh, and provincial elections were highly uh, suspicious. In the days and hours before Chistakedi's inauguration, the two men on the podium, we started with an intensive diplomatic activity to place uh, within and between African multilateral institutions, with SADC and the African Union as the key areas. An intensive intra-African diplomacy was deployed with sometimes uh, contradictory signals culminating in two statements, both launched from Addis Ababa on 17th of January with opposite messages. Um, first, Sadek congratulated and encouraged the Congolese government and the Electoral Commission for holding generally peaceful elections and called upon the international community to respect, to respect Congo's sovereignty and to support the government uh, and to support the government. And only hours later, still in Addis, Another meeting was held at the initiative of the African Union Chair, Paul Kagame, with different African countries and institutions, without this being an official African Union meeting. The heads of states and government and governments presented, uh, present agreed to urgently dispatch a high-level delegation to the DRC to interact with all Congolese stakeholders with the view of reaching a consensus and on a way out, and uh, on a way out to the elect post electoral crisis, they called upon the Congolese government to postpone the further process to create a space for this interaction. The Congolese authorities refused refused the, the scenario. The Constitutional Court endorsed the results of the Electoral Commission on the 19th of January, and the EU delegation AU delegation. The uh, delegation's visit scheduled for the 21st was cancelled. On uh, 24th of January, Chisake was inaugurated as um, DRC president. This whole process was accelerated. The neighboring states and the wider region faced a sharp uh, dilemma. On the one hand, there was a new political construction coming from a grossly manipulated electoral process with no guarantees for sustainable stability in Congo in the medium or the long run, 
But on the other hand, the new construction was seen as the only possible way to avoid immediate chaos and violence. It was very clear that proclaiming Shadari as a winner would have triggered violent protests in the population. It was equally clear that the establishment would never quit and hand over power to Martin Fayulu, uh, who obtained twice as many votes as Chisikedi. After a short hesitation, the African multilateral institutions opted for short-term stability, and almost immediately after that, Western diplomacies did the same. They all endorsed Chisikedi's presidency. The Congolese public opinion, likewise, accepted the official results with a lot of pragmatism. That Kabila did not manage to secure a third term was, and was unable to crown Ramazani as his successor, and that he was succeeded by an opposition member without major violence and gals was already much more than many people had dared to hope for. But of course, most of the people were aware of the fact that this was not the outcome of a transparent democratic process. But within the, the Congolese population, people gave to Chisikedi the advantage of doubt. If he would have known that uh, before an opposition leader taking over from Kabila without chaos, we would have signed for it. Um, there was remarkably few violence after uh, this um, deal. So Chisikedi started his presidency with a few signs that he generally wanted to improve the human rights situation and take up the struggle against the overwhelming corruption that Mobutu had institutionalized and that the Kabila regime had continued to, to practice. Chisikedi has very little space, but he uses and defends that space with a lot of intelligence and the strategic skill that people who met him before um, did not expect from him. He, he seems to, 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 to behave much more strategic, strategically skilled than, 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 than we have known him. He, he lived in Belgium, he was very active, he traveled a lot. Many of, many of us, including myself, have met him. And uh, he seems to grow very fast in his role from the beginning and was apparently accompanied by very talented counselors. The new president faced a militant public opinion, including in his own party, uh, where people expect him to make the difference in key areas which touch upon their lives, daily lives. The potential of violence in 2015 had been fueled by the fact that for a lot of people, the quality of their life uh, had hardly improved in the last two decades. Terrible lack of jobs and decent housing. The provision of water and electricity remains very problematic. Huge majority of the population has no access to quality education or health service services. People uh, are shocked about the low standards of their life and don't have the impression that it fundamentally improved since in, in, say in the last, uh, since the conflicts were, were ended. The human rights and security situation remain uh, worrisome because the state does not have the instruments to impose the rule of law, stop the local conflicts or disarm the armed groups. The new president uh, knew that people were very aware of the fact that the Congolese authorities haven't been able to change the way of the country is governed. And when you, I did research to, uh, I was um, organizing focus groups at, at, at really grassroots level and, and it was clear that people were extremely aware that uh, it was a governance problem and it never has changed. So JCKD will have to show results in the struggle for better governance and in the fight against corruption. In the uh, first weeks and months of his presidency, he made a lot of promises and um, he needed to do that to consolidate the advantage of doubt that people gave him. 
but there is a clear expiry date to this advantage of that because uh, GCKD will risk an increasing noisy and even violent opposition in the streets in case people will not feel convincing improvements during his presidency and will he'll have great difficulties to be reelected for a second term if he fails to if he fails to show those results. The indirect Senate elections made it clear that FCC is not interested at all in power sharing yeah, in, in a coalition with Kash. Instead, it appears it appears um, prepared to deploy its full weight to exert control uh, over as much institutions as uh, institutions, posts, and finances as possible. Um, it turned out to be rather greedy in the way things were divided afterwards, after the elections. Senate elections also exposed areas of tensions within the camps, within UDPS, right? within cash, within FCC. It decreases the chances for Chisikedi to materialize his promises and fulfill the expectations he created with his presidency. Situation further polarized around the, uh, around the formation of a government. With its large majority in parliament, FCC had, had the right to take the initiative. Uh, Kabila proposed several candidates from, uh, for the office of prime minister. All of them were from uh, Katanga and uh, all of them were and remained very powerful people in his inner circle. Uh, among the strongest and best known candidates were uh, Albert Yuma and Henry Mova. And Chisikini has refused five prime ministers proposed by Kabila in a row. Eventually, Sylvester Ilunga Ilokamba was appointed, much to, the, much to everybody's surprise. To be honest, not many people had heard about him. I had never heard his name. Uh, and we all considered him as a bit of a second rate figure. He is from Katanga uh, as well, uh, and he belongs to Kabila's Balubakat community. Ilunga is part of Kabila's political family, but he is not a key uh, personality in the inner circle. He served as a minister under Mobutu and has a, a, a rather technocratic profile. Since 2014, he was the director of the National Railways until appointment as a prime minister. He seems to be a compromise, uh, creating the space for further discussion of the primary uh, unsolved issues of who controls the ministries, the financial institutions, and security services. It looked like uh, it, it looked like something what, what which happened several times in the past. You install a puppet government around the weak prime minister and continue to govern to govern through parallel circles. Three months after the nomination of Ilunga, uh, a full government was installed with, again, uh, as expected, a large majority of FCC ministers. The division of mandates and responsibilities between two camps, within the two camps, was a long and painful process, not only because the arm wrestling between the two camps, but also, and maybe more, between because of the internal competition uh, in each of the camps. I found that rather interesting. Even if Kabila was able to maintain this level of power, he inevitably had less posts and functions to divide, divide among his, um, his key allies. The UDPS members were frustrated because they had to share what they considered as their fair part, fair part of, of the cake eh? with, with, with people of um, Vital Kameres, UNC. So I had the impression that the, the, the balance between the two camps was easier to obtain than the balance within the camps when it came to dividing the cake. The army remains eh, until today a Kabila fortress. Chisikidi tries to reinforce the older generations of officers uh, who served under Mobutu rather than officers who are the product of the wars in the East and the various waves of rebel integration who had less 
formal military training and are considered as loyal to Kabila, who himself is a product of the wars in the East. Shortly after appointing Ilunga, Shinsikiri confirmed the mandates of both uh, uh, Lieutenant General Celestin Bala as Army Chief of, of Staff, as well as uh, uh, Major General Jean Claude Yav as the Private Military Chief of the Staff of the President. Uh, those men who had been appointed by by uh, by uh, Kabila himself, and they were not on sanction list. And just below that level, you see Chisikedi trying to appoint newer people uh, with less established links to the Kabila regime. But what we see is that that he, he carefully tries to to have to create himself some form of network. Chisikedi yeah? tries to create some form of network within the army. It's uh, an environment he is not familiar with. He does not try to do that too brutally in order to avoid uh, violent reactions. And, and um, personally, I don't have the impression that it changed a lot to the basic fact that the fortress, that the army remains a real fortress. Um, so what we saw as development, development was that Kabila and Chisikeri um, depended on each other in, in a strange give and take relationship. And they, they both seem able to live with that. They, they both seem to accept that. Uh, and that created a certain stability uh, in, in the second half of 2019. But it remains to be seen how, over the medium term, the army and the street will position itself. It's something you have to be very aware of. Huh? The fact that the political landscape, which went to the final electoral competition at the end of 2018, uh, is non consolidated. These were uh, new platforms huh? with very weak institutional ties between them, huh? ties between the platforms, within the platforms, between the coalitions and the alliances. Um, it even goes for FCC, which was an, a, a new construction around Kabila's political family. Lamuka was created six weeks before the elections and, and Kash even, even later. So, uh, that's that's very these are very fra fragile constructions in institutional terms this means that individuals communities reach regions which feel un or underrepresented in the new government might seek new alliances manipulate local conflicts and armed groups to improve their position on the political chessboard meanwhile the security human rights situation in the east of the country is not improving and people still wait for a major sign that the government takes genuine steps towards better governance and less corruption. Of course, there has been the highly publicized uh, case against Vital Calmere, and the president of Felix, Felix Chisikedi's chief of staff and his main ally, political ally. He was arrested on uh, corruption charges uh, his uh, trial will uh, be very soon in, in, uh, in appeal. And his uh, arrest has put significant, significant pressure on the Cash Alliance, especially because some of GCK's parties are, have been seen by Camera supporters as very happy with it, with, with Camera's arrest and, and or even complicit. The president has traveled a lot. He has invested in Africa's multilateral institutions. The current ambition seems to be that he wants to lead the African Union from February uh, 21 onwards. And he has discreetly set up a working committee in preparation for his future term as a chairperson. He also tries to set up a coordination between Congo and its Eastern neighbors. Uh, in order to, to take full control of the armed groups and to restore security in, in Kivu, is very aware that he cannot do that on his own. 
at some point, even joint military operation was considered between between uh, Rwanda, Uganda, Burundi, Tanzania, and Congo. But this remains very sensitive because of the role these neighbors played in Congo civil war, wars. And an alliance between RDC, DRC, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Uganda, and Tanzania would also involve partners which have extremely bad relationships uh, among themselves. So that's 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 extremely problematic. We had the mini summit only only a week ago in Goma, which was an online event uh, where um, Burundi didn't turn up, but the others had a meeting, had a statement at the end, which is rather vague, and and, and so uh, it's still not very. Uh, palpable, visible, how, how this such construction could, could really uh, contribute to security. So we are going to already to new elections huh? the, the, in three years time in 2023, but you see that the electoral fever is already um, on the rise. Um, the president is in a very uncomfortable position between, on the one hand, um, Kabila's FCC with its, uh, its uh, overwhelming majority in parliament in the provinces, and on the other hand, international partners who encourage him to take as much space from Kabila as possible, but are very aware that his presidency is the result of an undemocratic election. His partners inter internationally and locally uh, are, and that's an interesting contradiction, are aware that of the fact that the only way to turn this questionable transfer of power into some form of a reality is by reinforcing Chisikedi's presidency, even if we all know where it comes from. The relation with the electorate is quite complex. A considerable part of the public um, seems to that seems to give Chisikedi's presidency the advantage of doubt, we said that. Um, and if he's not able to meet at least partly the huge expectations, uh, the public opinion might soon express its discontentment and frustration, possibly even in a violent way. We have been uh, riots in Kinshasa, several cities of the Kasai, um, for instance, in the hours and days after the senatorial election, and that was, that was uh, a first sign, uh, first important indi indication of, of the pressure which might come from grassroots. Chisikedi will have huge difficulties to gain control over the security services and has no experience in, at all in dealing with military and conflict related issues. He will be very vulnerable in front of the manipulation of the armed groups by local, provincial, and national politicians. The choice of the African multilateral institution to endorse Chisikedi's much contested victory has been decisive. They decided to do that because of uh, short term security reasons. It seemed the best and only way to avoid chaos and violence. And Chisikedi will have to give strong signals that he will be able to consolidate relative calm. If not, the African institution's attitude towards him and his presidency might change quickly. With the um, ad hoc platform created for, uh, for the 2018 contest already under pressure, political elites will soon look to strike new balances and forge fresh alliances. This will poison the ground for more prosperity, security, and better governance, which is really has to deliver if he wants to be reelected. The image on the podium eh, during Chisikedi's oath taking ceremony uh, we started with was strong and meaningful. The outgoing president relaxed and smiling, visible, visibly comfortable with the situation, optimistic. The sweating new president in his undersized bulletproof vest, apologizing for his moment of weakness. Uh, on that moment, many observers regarded Chisikedi as a mouse in the paws of a cat who was sure to, to eat it on the moment it wanted to eat the mouse. Scenarios were circulating that Chisikedi would not come to the end of his terms eh, by coup, for instance, or impeachment because he submitted a fake diploma as part of his brochure as a candidate for presidency. Um, 
the impression I have, and that's that's it's highly personal by someone who did not have the chance to go back to Congo for a while. Uh, the impression I have is that Kabila was able to consolidate his domination over his own um, um, over his own um, constituency, the, 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 the better than Chisikedi. Eh? I have the impression that he um, managed to um, have a, a bit of uh, cohesion within his camp um, easier than, than Chisikedi or the people of Lamuka. He was able to consolidate his domination of the political institutions. He kept his economic empire intact, very important. And has and his grip on the army as well. In my view, the only real victory for uh, Felix, the only real moment that he uh, gave evidence of political uh, strength, was having still five uh, barons of the Kabila regime for the office of prime minister. <laughs> Over the months, we felt a certain balance developing between Kabila and Chisikiri. We felt that the two leaders could live with the cohabitation. And um, the idea, the impression that Chisikiri could come to an early end of his mandate uh, disappeared after a while, at least again, uh, in my personal perspective. Um, at this moment, I had the impression that Kabila seems very confident that he or someone he will appoint uh, in his camp as a candidate for the presidency will win the 2023 election without too much cheating, without too much violence or intimidation. Um, for his part, Chisikedi realizes that his promises have only been very partly fulfilled and that there is no chance that he will be able to fulfill them entirely. Um, FCC already started to deploy communication strategies, putting the entire burden of the lack of progress on Chisikedi's shoulders. Not long ago, um, Felix seemed to be preparing attacks on key institutions Kabila controls, and which allowed him to win the 2018 elections, such as the Independent Electoral Commission and the Constitutional Court. He would have he wouldn't have been able to 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 do this. The, the deal, um, which was uh, made in January 2019, wouldn't have been uh, possible without Kabila's full control over the Electoral Commission and the Constitutional Court. The recent uh, attempts of Chisikedi to to break in these structures uh, is is of course. Uh, considered as a real threat by, by Kabila. So if Felix Chisikidi uh, continues with it, in case he would um, extend the fight against corruptions to Kabila circles, uh, especially if these attempts would focus on the economic empire of Kabila, Kabila's clan and family, and then I think the pressure might rise very soon. The, and the climate might deteriorate very, very quickly. Chisikiri is not even halfway in his mandate, and the chances that he will materialize his promises and the people's expectations seem very bleak. Um, in January 2019, uh, once again, the country seemed close to implosion, but with the most unlikely political deal that was avoided. But no sustainable progress will be made in the struggle against the root causes of Congo's conflict. The people in Congo's suburbs, plains, and hills will still have to will still have the profound impression that their lives haven't improved. It is hard to imagine how they can be mobilized for new elections and believe that elections are a legitimate legitimate tool for constructive change. It's hard to um, imagine how people will believe in that after what what happened. Bye. Endorsing the outcome of the 2018 election and the knowledge that was fraudulently obtained, the African and, and the international communities have not only robbed the Congolese people of its choice, 
in the Congolese population of its choice, but also delivered a disastrous signal to other countries where the dictators cling to power, no matter the price. So Congo remains and will continue to be a roller coaster of events and emotions where one should always expect the unexpected. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you, Chris. Um, so uh, if you have questions, you can raise your hand in the uh, tennis or you can type them into the question and answer box and I will try to read them off. Um, we have um, a couple of questions uh, about um, COVID-19 and um, mm -hmm. let me just sort of put it. It says, uh, how has COVID-19 crisis affected the security of the food supply in Congo, Congolese cities? Um, is the Congo's uh, different from patterns that are emerging elsewhere in Africa concerning food supply for uh, the coronavirus? Um, so, uh, but more generally, I think we can ask sort of what 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 ways has uh, the country been affected by this over the past uh, eight nine months? I think that in uh, in Congo the the figures of COVID nineteen have been remarkable remarkably low. Um, we just discussed what they are able to do in Congo with figures. Right? So, but um, we, we don't see high pressure. Um, uh, we don't see high pressure on the Congolese health system. Right? You, can, you, can, you can hide figures, you can cough up fake figures, but, but you cannot hide the pressure on the health system as you have seen it in some European and Latin American countries. Um, so uh, the I, I, I believe that the impact of COVID nineteen in Congo has been has been much much lower at least in, in the in the short run in the immediate uh, run. Um, of course, we know that that the in case major outbreak would would follow, it um, it would be. Uh, the, the, the health system does not have the capacity to to react in in uh, in, in a massive, effective, and very organized um, way. So that's something we are we are very aware of. And in, in the um, the impact of it on the on the food supplies is, is something which, which um, I did not I did not study. I I I, I could make a guess, but that's not. I'm not going to do that. It's it's outside my competence. Great. Um, so, uh, thank you. Could you provide more insight on the Kameri indictment? Uh, why him, given all the people involved in corruption? Why now? Does he have a successor uh, in the UNC? Um, there has been a lot of speculation. Uh, I... Uh, I believe that uh, Vital Kamiri, of course, uh, I mean, the, the people around him uh, did not do much effort to, to, to hide their, 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 their creed. There have been videos and very visible, uh, visible uh, images of, 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 of my circulating. Um, the, um, there are many reasons, I think, for uh, what happened to Camara, but I believe that it's important uh, for um, Felix Chisikedi to, to show results, including on, on corruption. And then I think that this was very important to, uh, to sacrifice Camara, uh, who is uh, uh, an, uh, an ally and... and, and um, but this also, he also competes the the he's he's, he's, he's not the loyal ally of of, of when I when I was talking to diplomats in the months in, in six weeks before the elections and they saw Chisikidi and Kamari turning up uh, in their uh, waiting halls uh, the, the ambassadors know uh, people told me it's obvious in their body language and the way they speak to each other, they look to each other, that these people are, are not really allies. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Can I ask, the, there's, some, there's some people who've interpreted 
this as an attack on as an attack on Chisichetti's power. Um, and it sounds like you're more in the camp of seeing this as actually Chisichetti showing that he's going to be serious about corruption and maybe undercutting someone who was a, 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 a pretender to his power. Well, many people suggest that it has been scared by by uh, Kabila huh? that, that to to weaken the. Yeah. But I don't I don't have that impression. I I have no indication for that. I can imagine maybe good reasons for him to do that, but I don't have uh, indications. I I think that that um, um, that Kabila and Kabila's camp um, watched it. As and, and as, as something they, they for them it's a good development. I think it's very important what happened for Chisikiri because what was UDPS at the end of his uh, of uh, his father's death? It it had been a nationwide opposition movement, and it uh, declined. And by the time um, um, Etienne was dying, it it had its uh, stronghold in Kinshasa and some neighborhoods of and, and in the Kasai, basically, it had stopped long ago to be a national movement. And uh, if you want the credibility as UDPS, as uh, Chisikedi, yeah, as Felix, as a national leader, you need a feat in the East. Yeah? And that was that was Kamira's contribution, and he was very important. Um, in in the, 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 the credibility, the legitimacy of, of, of a national president, and he loses this. Yeah? The attempts at this moment to and uh, to create a, a, a loyal wing, loyal to Chisikedi wing inside Nancy against uh, against the, the, the people around uh, Kamere, is he loyal to Kamere? That's a strategy we've seen often in Congolese politics. Uh, but but I I'm not sure I doubt I don't think that this will be uh, this initiative will be able to 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 give him a credible implantation in in the east. Uh, another question: uh, What do you think was the role of the U.S., especially Ambassador Mike Hammer, in accepting the fraudulent 2018 results and backing Chisiketti? Um, and as a follow-up, do you think that a stronger international stand against this deal might have changed the situation for the better? It's a very good question. It, the, the dilemma was was quite uh, uh, was 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 quite graphic. You have a situation where you could have violence in the short run, and, and it's uh, apparently very difficult to to avoid it. Um, and you try to avoid it by working out this deal. Um, and you can, uh, and by this deal, uh, you undermine the, 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 the longer term initiatives to search for uh, sustainable solutions. Huh? It's, it's, it's an interesting contradiction. Um, I am not sure what the um, Western um, input was in the deal being worked out, but of course, uh, I think that once endorsed, once the judgment that in this situation this is the best thing to do, then then you see, of course, an, an, a full investment of, of some of the countries and, and then maybe the U.S. in the first place to to support GCK. And that that is it's also an interesting idea. You know that the guy is not elected, that is not normally elected, that he does not uh, win at the majority of the votes, but you know that. Uh, the only way to turn this fake um, hand, handover of power into something real is by reinforcing them, reinforcing him. And um, Chisikidi is very aware of that. He has spent a lot of time outside the country uh, dividing between the West and, and, and the African multilateral institutions. Um, but, but I often think that uh, during the last decades, I often thought that, that, that um, we um, underestimate the, the, the importance, the decisive importance of, of, of very local Congolese uh, dynamics towards what, what really happens. So I'm not, I'm not sure uh, what, what uh, 
the impact will be of this strategy in the long run. I'm not sure if it will have served democracy and the acceptance of democracy, the belief that elections could change something for the better. I, I, I was in Congo in uh, February and March, okay. and the, the head of um, San, uh, Sanko's uh, electoral uh, group, um, the, the priest who was in charge of um, the election monitoring, um, his response, I asked him basically this, this, this sort of question about the, what effect this would have on democracy. And uh, his answer was very, um, very pragmatic um, mm-hmm. and suggesting, you know, well, we're an emerging democracy. Um, this is a step forward. It's imperfect, but at least we got rid of, you know, at least we got rid of Kabila and um, we got somebody who's pretty good. Um, so um, the thing that I heard most when I was there from people um, that interested them most for how to build democracy in the future was to hold local elections. Um, we heard this everywhere. People in Kinshasa were a little less interested in it, but um, in Lubumbashi and Bujimai, uh, everybody talked about local elections as, as key. Um, and there was some debate over how much reform needed to be done before the elections could take place. Um, But there was a real sense that because there had never been local elections, because all local officials are appointed by the central government and they're therefore beholden to the central government. So I'm just curious what you think uh, about the possibility of local elections. Um, Is that something that that the international community should be supporting? Is it something that, that could make a difference or are they likely just to be as completely useless as uh, other elections. Well, I've been leading uh, a European network on advocacy for Central Africa, and that that debate was in the middle of what we were trying to put on tables. Right? Uh, if you see what 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 came out of the elections of 2006, uh, with a uh, presidency and and um, national assembly and a provincial assembly. Provincial, provincial assemblies, then, then you have the, um, the house of uh, the architecture of Congolese democracy with, with um, um, a, a heavy, heavy roof and, and maybe walls with no foundation. Eh? It's, it's, it's about uh, accountability and, and accountability starts at grassroots level. Eh? It, it's, it's about people being aware of the grip they can have on their own living conditions. And I always thought the uh, local elections are, are crucial. Um, I'm not sure why they haven't been organized. I, I, I can believe that in very complex political situations, it was simply not seen as a priority. Uh, but but I think the uh, the price for it is is is, is very negative. And the, the the impact of the non-organization of the local elections is is very it's very important. So I think it's uh, people people who do not consider it as a priority try to refer to the potential of local conflict. And but but I I believe that in in. In most of the areas uh, in Congo, it's able, it should be possible to organize them. Um, we know, of course, what we've seen now with the provincial elections is how, uh, um, if you see how the provincial elections have been rigged, then it's not impossible to rig them as well uh, at, at a very local level. But, but uh, yeah. it, it is my, my, my advocacy since 2006 to make that a priority. But what I heard, what I heard from people was, even if they are rigged, um, it'll still change the mentality because at least there'll be the pretense that they've been chosen by the people. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah, um, it's uh, it's about Congolese call it loto prise en charge, eh? taking yeah. yourself, uh, taking your own possibilities uh, and responsibilities, and that's that's that that's that's important, and not only stare to the, the highest level and watch what comes out of that and watch what and, and, and wait until it drifts down to, to, your, to your place. But we, where we are, we have needs and you have to put those needs on the table and you have to talk to authorities, you have to question them. Huh? For me, an interesting, an interesting um, 
initiative was La Lucha, yeah, one of the uh, youth movements in the neighborhoods in 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 uh, in Como in the first place and later in in many many uh, cities, where the idea was. Um, encourage people to question the authorities. Yeah? How is it possible that we live next to a lake and when we open the tap, there is no water coming? How can you explain that? I mean, you have the responsibility. We voted for you, dear brothers and sisters of the provincial assembly. But what, what are you doing for that? Yeah? Manifestations for uh, Monisco, you are here to protect us. How does it come that you are the most expensive mission, UN mission in the world, at least at that time, I'm not sure now. How does it come that we don't feel protected? And, and, and that's something uh, on a moment where civil society, where opposition had difficulties to, to mobilize people and, and give people the feeling that if they do something, it could make a bit of change. And it's not only exposing themselves to danger, but they could have results. Yeah, and that's where it starts. Yeah? That's where it starts. And, and and I like that idea. I love that idea. And that's that's the um, struggle of survival and the creativity in this that, that Congolese people needed to develop in a, a, a context where you have um, the, the, a ruined state for, for, for decades. So, um, so uh, another question. Um, what do you predict will be the result of the push for implementation of UN mapping report recommendations by Dr. McQuege and others? Yeah, um, honestly, I didn't expect this. But it's it's not that I that I thought well, it's the nine birthdays so and next year is the ten birthday, but the tenth anniversary. But uh, I did not I didn't I did not expect this. I um, I think it's very important. I think it's important not to focus too much on that because it's, I mean, we should try to obtain that, but, but it's not the only cause of what goes wrong in, 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 in Congo. It should not keep us from looking, monitoring, and, 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 and be severe on, on governance in, in Congo. Yeah? Of course, it's, it's, very, it's very important. And, and what happens in the East until today, the way that local conflicts are manipulated and the, the, the strange forms that, that they are interlinked locally, provincially, nationally, and internationally. Yeah? It, it, it remains uh, one of the most important um, sources of suffering and, and human rights via, uh, violation, but it's, it's not the only problem in Congo. Uh, the, 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 the corruption governance um, bit of the problem is, is at least as, as important. Um, what are Fayulu's chances in the future? Um, and while we're at it, uh, what's the likely future for uh, Felix uh, Cheschetti and Kabila? Um, particularly because they say, um, how do you anticipate the future unfolding for both Felix and Joseph as Joseph uh, still harbors ambition in reclaiming the presidency? So. What do we um, see for people like Fayulu, Chisiketi, Kabila? Yeah. Um, Fayulu was a phenomenon, yeah. Um, I think there are there were two miracles. Yeah? I mean, the 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 number of elements that played on the moment that he was appointed as a joint candidate. Yeah? Bemba and Katumbi were there, but were not allowed to stand yeah? to, to, to stand for presidency, etc. Um, it was, we shouldn't forget that at that moment, Fayulu was not a national figure. He was, he was, uh, when I was doing my research into um, political credibility at grassroots level, huh? who do you believe in? Huh? Are, are there leaders you take seriously? No one except Fayulu. Huh? Fayulu, uh, because you have political leaders who support riots, but who are not there when people are beaten. But Fayulu get beaten himself. He was there with people. Eh? He, 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 he's, he was considered as someone else. Eh? He's not one of those people on another planet doing politics. It's not important if they're majority or opposition, they're all the same. Eh? Fayulu was not the same, but that was only in Kinshasa. Outside, outside um, 
Kinshasa in his, his uh, province of origin. Um, outside that, he was not very, very known. And, and that, that was a miracle. And then very, very skillfully, uh, he's a gifted speaker. Uh, he was able to incarnate the, 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 the aspirations, the needs of, of the people. You go out, talk to them, and you say, okay, I'm the one who is able to change this. And then the question is, will they believe you or will they not believe you? And they did. And that, that, the way that he did that, um, supported, of course, by, by strong people and leaning also on, on people who are locally very important, yeah? that, that, was, that was, again, some kind of a miracle. That was not what you could expect. That was much better than you could expect. And then the question is, are these two miracles going to produce themselves next time? Of course, now he is an icon. Yeah? And, and, but but, but the, the alliance with, with, with Katumbi and Bemba and all, you've seen that disintegrating, not, not formally, but, but you did not feel those guys saying that he's still our guy. Katumbi's already set up his own party, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, but that, that, that will be something else. That will be a totally different starting point. Eh? So um, he's an interesting personality. He's, um, you've seen him moving a bit eh? in, in, in the months after, um, uh, after the elections he lost, even if he won them. Uh, it, it became a bit pathetic. It, it seemed that he was talking outside the political political debate. He was outside dynamics. But but uh, I've seen that he was able to maintain that discourse and and that, that he still continues to be that he's building up a bit of audience at this moment. Again, that's the feeling I have. But of course, the mandate is five years, and we are approaching the end of the second year, so there's a long time to go. Kabila, uh, Kabila is, um, he still seems quite relaxed. Huh? Um, and that's, that's, we haven't seen him so much relaxed while he was president. Um, I think that for a long time, he was unable to imagine someone else as a president that he thought I like this job and I'm doing it well and it's no one will do this better and I'm the natural heir of my father's throne. Um, the question is, will he be able to maintain himself yeah, as an influential person? Will he be able to maintain his economic empire, which is huge? And um, will he be able to have that, that moral leadership on, on his political family that wasn't to be taken for granted. And I think he was able to do that. Um, in the days that minister, um, posts of ministers and, and, and Senate senators and, and, and all had to be divided, um, I saw him sweating in the background eh? because, because he was under a lot of pressure. You saw people from his camp starting to make noise, people like, Bahati, Lukebo, people like Lambe, Mende, Kalef wasn't happy eh, that he, eh? all these people sought for a new place under the sun. And he dealt with that. Um, will he stand as a, as a president himself? Um, Vilanya and other people have been announcing this, that there are, there are no reasons not to have him as a candidate, etc. Yeah, saying, making such statements, right? people within this camp. But, but um, I think he enjoys being influential without being the president. I think it's not an act of theater, the fact that he seems to be more relaxed. He seems to be able to, to, to live with that. Of course, if you really go somewhere with the implementation of the recommendation of the mapping report, then of course, you will have a problem as well. Okay. Uh, of course, Phoenix, Phoenix grew in his role. Um, um, I, I think he has been able to give the, the, 
the the right signals that he's um, also in his body language, also in the, the way he, he, he expresses himself. Um, he's doing this much better than I than I told he would. Yeah? I think I'm not the only one. Uh, but but he has no leverage. He has no power. Yeah? Uh, and and um, he knows how to deal with that. But he knows to to maintain the small, the little space he has. But he is not able to break in. Or I don't have that impression. When you when 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 we look at what happened in the army, it's 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 very soft and careful. Try to at least have the start of a network. Yeah? Um, 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 he's he's doing not bad as 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 a, as a president, at least in his appearance. Huh? I mean, it's not everybody who will be. Uh, in the run for uh, president of the African Union, for instance, it's a. Uh, but but um, I don't see him in uh, in the arena uh, as one gladiator fighting to the others and coming out as 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 a winner in the electoral thing. I'm, I'm a bit afraid of that. And um, losing Canary, I think um, he underestimates that. If you want to be a national leader, you cannot only depend on Kinshasa and yeah. a bit of the Kasai, or at least the Kasai. It's not enough. Yeah. Um, okay, we're running short on time, so I'm going to give you a couple of quick questions, and you can sort of answer what you get to. One is on on youth movements. Uh, to what degree do you see politics as being stratified by age? Are there noticeable differences between older and younger generations in terms of how they relate to re to elections? Do they see political mobilization as more hopeful than their elders? Um, and then a couple of uh, questions on the role of the international community. Uh, why did Western powers not proclaim loud and clear um, that the, the malfeasance of Seni um, should be condemned? Um, and another more general question about sort of why is the international community so willing to work with uh, what the, uh, the questioner calls the international gangsters? Um, and uh, hasn't had stronger sanctions against um, some some of the the people in um, in Congo. This is a question actually coming from someone in Congo uh, who's listening in, who is saying, um, you know, that uh, how what frustrates is how people are being used and abused by the political class, um, including the uh, economic class. Um, and it says, uh, what we need is education and technical trades, and uh, an open public taxation system. That's fully accountable, but instead the international community keeps supporting these crooks, basically. So, <laughs> yeah, um, about five minutes till we need to wrap up. So, yeah, the, okay. Um, the um, it's important the um, age gap. Huh? It's um, conflicts in Congo, in Congo are extremely complex, uh, and there are layers, but it's at least also um, a generation gap, generation conflict. Um, and I think, I think uh, what um, the role that youth movements played in creating resistance against Kabila staying and also in engaging in avoiding that to become very violent, uh, I think that was one of the uh, not so much heartwarming um phenomenon phenomenon i was allowed to observe um and then then you've seen how that um it was a bit congolized it's 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 a it's a negative term of course but what you see if something works then people copy it and you you, you have a, a lot of organizations with uh trying to um compete each other for, for visibility, for, um, for fund money, for international support. And, and that, that, of course, did not contribute to the credibility of, of youth movements as, as such. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that uh, in most of the parties, yeah, political parties, you have young people, young parliamentarians, yeah, um, in all the corners of the political landscape who are 
tired of, of, of this very old school Congolese ways in, uh, in of dealing with things. And I, I believe in them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that um, I haven't seen much international actors who invest in capacity building of, of, of parties, and political parties. Eh? Uh, but but I, 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 I see a lot of sense in that. Eh? Um, the question is, how can we uh, have um, a country where the political debate is about politics and it's not something uh, w w with a mixture of kleptocrats and warlords and former warlords. And so that's, that's um, we should invest in that as well. And, and that's, we're talking about existing political personnel and, and, and not the highest level of the parties, but the people below that. They carry the future, they have more technical skills and insights and expectations. And it's not only about politics and dividing the cake and ideology. And, and I, I believe in that. I believe in the, I, I don't think that the problems of Congo um, are, will be endless as many people unfortunately seem to believe. I think that uh, there is a generation coming up. If you look at the um, demographic structure of the country, um, you have to you have to be hopeful, eh? and then the question will be how to to uh, integrate people in 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 useful, rewarding, productive uh, ways of uh, ways of life. Um, but but um, for me, it's it's very important, uh, young people, recognizing the generation dimension in the different levels of conflict in in Congo. Why do we work with gangsters? Why do we work with the bad guys? It's a good question. Why do we do that? It's, it's pragmatic. Uh, you see that the West is deploying beautiful uh, words and recommendations on democracy on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, is, 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 goes very far in the acceptance of undemocratic practices. And then I, I believe that um, take someone as, uh, like, like uh, President Kagame, eh, who is criticized for a lot of things in his own country and in Congo. Uh, but as long as he is able to be credible as a factor of stability, relative stability in uh, an area, almost a notion of Instable, instability, he will continue to be to be supported. Why do you think that uh, Kabila has been supported by Angola? Because Kabila thought it had been it had to do with with loyalty, with personal loyalty that Dos Santos loved his father and himself. I don't think at all that was the case. I think that um, the Angolans are very well able to. Uh, assess the situation and to, 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 to make their own calculations and conclude that, okay, we will have this and that impact if the country collapses. And this guy is maybe the best bet that it will not collapse. Yeah? This is why we all, uh, we, we all um, support people who are considered as negative forces. And, and that's well understood, of course. And some African heads of state invest in the deployment of uh, brigades from their country in, in multilateral troops, yeah? um, African Union troops, for instance. Yeah? And that's, that's, that's to reinforce that idea. That, OK, guys, I'm here. And, and I can offer a bit of the stability you uh, so much need. Um, we should probably wrap up there. If you have a last last thought, we're we're at our time. Well, um, these are these, these were two important things for me. The question of why 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 are why isn't that? I, I'm not sure how the question was phrased, but I had, I had the impression it had to do with the fact that uh, 
it's very hard in the reconstruction of Congo to uh, become technical. Right? The discussion is, is, is very political and, and, and not always technical. And, and that's, 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 of course, yes, that's, that's something I can, only, um, I can only agree that that is the case. And then maybe it's, uh, I can refer again to what I said about the younger people and then I'm not talking about youth movements in the street, et cetera, inviting people to question their own authorities. It's important, but I'm talking then about people within parties, within, within political institutions who are keen to, to, to make difference and who understand and realize that there is a technical dimension to that. And they have to be, they have to have the chance to, to, to be trained and, and to expose themselves. Well, thank you so much. This has been a, a fantastic talk and having, having uh, fled from Congo as COVID was uh, beginning to shut down airports. Uh, yeah, it's really, been on yes. my mind for months. So I'm very glad to, to hear yeah. more perspectives. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you.